The cards I have in my hand are no ordinary deck. In fact, these are tarot cards and they're reputed to be the most effective and powerful method of foretelling the future. You've got to handle cards like these with some care. Now, interest in astrology has always been strong. And if we're to judge by the number of palmists, fortune tellers, crystal ball gazers, soothsayers of every description currently in operation around the country, it seems that that interest is definitely on the increase. However, astrology is but one detail in the much broader canvas of what we sometimes call the occult. Now, we on TV Gaga have decided to, tentatively at least, explore this hidden world. And to get us underway, myself and Barbara recently ventured into the city centre to see what we could find out about fate and what it had in store for us. for nothing in life because you'll get it yourself. I'd like to look at your hand. You have a very long life, my dear. Your marriage line is good. You won't end your days alone. I don't see you ending your days alone. I do see you six difficult months in your life. Depth is around you and deepness. You're compassionate, but you're also a temple. Now, I want you to make a wish for me. That wish won't come to you for two days, two months, or two years, but you will get your wish. Much depth and happiness around you, a long life. Your lifeline ends here, not here. We turn the cards now. Well, as you can see, happiness, love, happiness, do well in your business and work as life goes on and contentment with minor spirit. The first time you met a lady in your life, you met her where there was plenty of people. She liked you from the start. Very happy lady, you know? So there'll never be a divorce or a separation. Six or eight thousand miles is coming into your cards. Are you taking a trip or a journey? Well, I've none planned at the moment, no. Well, before the year is out, through business, you may just take a few flights over. It says you'll go a few times. I always get the cards from and the cards never lie. <laughs> I was surprised actually that she could tell me so much about my past and um, a bit about the present, quite a bit about the present, because at the time I was oh, very much in between jobs and everything else and didn't really know where I was going and she, she knew that straight away, you know. I'm, I'm the kind of person that uh, I like to know what's going to happen before it actually happens, if you know what I mean. And she kind of suits me. If yeah, a young girl comes in here, and of a chat. There's not much good to her. If there's going to be any upset or worry, if there's going to be a pregnancy before marriage or anything like that, you would tell this girl that, you know. And then she'd realise maybe in three days, maybe in three weeks, she'd be back to tell you something. My future is looking good in the long term. In the long term? In the long term. <laughs> what about the short term? The short term, um, a bit rocky. That means you're not going to get paid for this interview. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I gather that. <laughs> what do you reckon it takes to be a professional fortune teller? It takes a deep insight into people, a very deep insight. Then you have the psychicness around you, and you either, I'd say, picking up a book and trying to read someone's fortune from it is very difficult. Now, I would tell man or woman if something wasn't going to go right. They may not like the truth, you know, because everything could be looking all right in their life at the time. But into the distant future, the immediate future, you could see some change that they wouldn't like, or it might be sadness, it might be a break, it might be an up level. God knows what. You would tell that person, but they wouldn't like it, you know? Everyone wants to know about tarot. People want to have their cards read, they want to learn to read them. Either sometimes for meditation, sometimes for a party piece, sometimes because they think it's going to be able to predict every event that's going to happen to them for the next 40 years, which might be a bit optimistic. 
There are uh, two kinds of tarot cards. There's something called the major arcana or the great trumps, which have nothing to do with playing cards. You'll see a couple of them here. Here's the hanged man, the magician, this card death, which a lot of people would say, oh my God, what's going to happen to me? Well, every time death turned up, well, you have a one in 7.8 chance of it turning up in a 10 card spread because there's 78 cards in the deck. You'd have them dropping like flies all over Dublin with the number of tarot decks I've sold. The crammed shelves of Gloria Hamilton's bookshop, The Alchemist's Head, confirm that astrology is but one strand in the mysterious and complex tapestry of what we have come to call the occult. The word occult means hidden, and that's the only thing it does mean. Now, the things which are hidden sometimes become clear. So the boundaries of the occult are continually shifting. Within my own lifetime, say 50 years ago even, hypnotism was regarded as very occult and not very respectable subject. Now, there is still a little doubt in some people's minds about it, but substantially hypnotism has become a science. We know what happens in many cases and so there's nothing occult about that. Going back once again to the popular perception of the occult, people tend to use words like supernatural. Oh, I hate that word, supernatural. Why? Nothing whatever is supernatural. There are things which are supernormal. Uh, that is, that we don't understand them. But everything happens according to the law of cause and effect. That's a natural law. Now, if we can't always find the cause for a specific effect, or if we can't always know the effect of a special cause, that means only this, that we don't know everything. I was telling you about the Spannerist theory, and I think I'd have to go along with that, that most of the universe can be explained easily, and every once in a while there's a spanner in the works. And I can't account for it. Um, my logic tells me there's no such thing as predestination. It makes no sense to me whatsoever. And yet I've seen the odd, very, very odd time I've seen something which struck me as precognition for telling an actual specific event. And I cannot explain it. I don't think it happens often. I do think clairvoyance occurs. I don't think that happens often. And I don't think people can turn it on like, like water tap. But there are things that I can't explain as pretty much of a rationalist to describe myself. But would Gloria caution people who are becoming interested in the occult to be careful of the magical arts? I don't actually think it's necessary to give cautionary advice. I'll tell you why. Because when you get seriously into the occult, it is so difficult and so demanding and so arcane the language that you could learn to be an accountant as easily as you could learn to be a master magician. And you'd pass your accountancy exams before you get to whatever st stages of initiation you were aiming for so that anyone who's just interested in it casually tends to drop by the wayside pretty quickly. Um, I think the dangers are really exaggerated. It's too difficult to be that dangerous. It's not that accessible. Anybody who goes about experimenting in something that he doesn't understand, whether it be occultism or machinery or chemistry, is likely to get into a bit of a fix about it. There are ways of studying things, and if you go about them the right way, you shouldn't come to any harm, but if you start putting, jumping in off the deep end without knowing what you're doing, then you're going to come to harm. And it's a good thing you do, because you're not the sort of occultist that we want. Magic is in the air. We don't practice what some people would call black magic. We don't see there is any such thing. We work to help people. Uh, we work for our own spiritual development and we work for peace and evolution in the world. Uh, we don't go against any of the principles, and there are a set of principles laid down for us before we can perform these ceremonies. Um, so, uh, you know, black magic is something that was created in occult books that to, to sell. It is I believe that the phenomena uh, recently of the moving statues in Balanced Spittle and elsewhere are or is rather, the, the goddess Danu of ancient Ireland uh, being aroused in the subconscious minds of, of its people. 
and they are they, they, they only can personify it because they're mainly Catholic um, in, in Our Lady but she is still it, it's still the one deity I mean no matter what you call it it's still the one deity the one would you call yourself a witch I would yes uh, we don't see this life as a veil of tears as some people would have us believe we see this life as being a whole life of worship of fun of enjoying ourselves and of helping other people.